The Concert NMX line received an update to meet the ATX version 3.1 requirements, which require, among others, a PSU to withstand 200% of its maximum power for short periods. Another unique feature of these new models is the fan speed control knob, through which you can adjust the fan speed at light loads from 0 RPM up to full speed. For instance, when you select a 500 to 600 RPM fan speed at light loads, this will be the starting point and increase when the PSU's thermal load increases. So, instead of providing a switch to select or deselect the fan's semi-passive mode, Corsair provided the option to choose the fan's starting speed. In today's review, I will evaluate the second strongest member of the RMX ATX version 3.1 line, which has a maximum power of 850 watt. I have already evaluated the 1000W model, you can read its review on hwbusters.com. The box has a photo of the PSU on its front side and the corresponding cybernetics ratings for efficiency and noise. If you want more data about the PSU's technical specs, look at the back of the box. The chassis has a distinctive look with the uniquely shaped perforations that Corsair used for the fan and exhaust grills. Moreover, the PSU has standard dimensions, allowing for a 140mm fan to offer the desired airflow at low enough RPMs for reduced noise output. On the front side, you will find the power switch, the AC receptacle and the fan speed control knob. Around the back, the modular board has 11 sockets, one of which is 12V 2x6 type. Corsair didn't use two 8-pin sockets in this PSU's, for the high-power PCI Express connector, but preferred a native one. All cables are embossed and the PSU has two EPS and three PCI Express 6 plus 2 pin connectors, all on dedicated cables, which is the correct, best thing to do. There is also a high-power PCI Express connector set at 600W maximum power. There are enough cables and connectors to allow the PSU to deliver its full power without any issues and all cables are long enough to avoid compatibility issues. I only disagree with the short distances between the peripheral connectors. Channel World Technology provides the platform, the same OEM that manufactured the previous generation of RMX units. CWT also makes the RMX Shift units. The RMX platform is different from the RMX Shift 1, which is expected given the different placement of the modular board. The new RMX platform looks overloaded with parts, although the PCB's dimensions are normal, and several dotted boards are used to save some space. Given the PSU's efficiency, the heatsinks are large enough to take some burden off the fan's shoulders for reduced noise output. The electrolytic caps on the secondary side are not blocked from the fan's airflow and they are of high quality. Although polymer caps are preferred for ripple filtering because of their increased tolerance to high operating temperatures and their high ripple current ratings, still their increased cost and reduced capacitance makes the electrolytic caps a requirement for every PSU. To cope with increased transient loads, Besides a high speed response, you also need increased capacitance on the secondary side and that is where the electrolytic caps are required since they offer a high price per capacitance ratio. The build quality is high with good parts everywhere and excellent soldering quality on the PCB. The design follows the modern trend with an APFC converter, half bridge topology and an LLC resonant converter on the primary side. On the secondary side is a synchronous rectification scheme for the 12V rail and a pair of DC-DC converters for the minor rails. The PSU also uses a microchip MCU to control the fan's speed. The fan is the usual aspect, the Corsair NR140HP, which uses a fluid dynamic bearing that won't bother you at low speeds. The 12V rail OCP triggering points are below 130%, but under hot temperatures, the respective point is higher than the one at lower temperatures. It should be the other way around and with a significant difference. In other words, the hot OCP triggering point must be lower to protect the PSU effectively. The same is the situation for OCP on the minor rails, which are also pretty high, especially 
on the 3.3 volt rail. Moreover, the overpowered protection triggering points might be well below 130% but are similar between cold and hot conditions. They are conservative though and the PSU has fan failure protection and this is a big plus since the fence operation is crucial for the PSU's operation. Load regulation is tight on all rails. Ripple suppression is good overall. The transient response deviations are low, especially on the minor rails. Nonetheless, the 3.3 volt rail drops below 3.2 volt in this test, which wouldn't be the case with an increase in its nominal voltage. The PSU passes all ATX version 3.1 transient response tests, but the 3.3 volt rail drops low in the 180 and 200% load tests. The 12 volt rail stays high enough, but there is room for improvement in the 180 and 200% transient response tests. Efficiency is decent at normal loads and high enough at light and super light loads. The unit's average efficiency is clearly within the range of the cybernetics gold level, actually close to the top limits, which are 89% for 115 volt and 91% for 230 volt. The EPFC converter performs well. The 5SB rail is highly efficient. Vampire power is low. The PSU's average noise output is low at both voltage inputs. Typically, for the CWT platform, the semi-passive operation doesn't last long if you push the minor rails hard, which I do in this test. Corsair also has the maximum combined power of the minor rails set high at 150 watt, while most modern platforms keep it at 100 watt, so they have an advantage in this test. In any case, at up to 550 watt at 12 volt, the PSU's noise is kept below 20 decibels, so it won't bother you. The PSU exceeds 30 decibels for short periods and this is close to its full load. The 230 volt fan noise profile has some small differences uh, from the 115 volt one. The semi passive mode lasts about the same and the over 30 decibels operating region starts a bit earlier at 775 watt versus 115 watt at 115 volt input. The overall performance is high at 115 volt, while at 230 volt it drops a bit, but still the PSU achieves a high place in the overall performance chart. The new Corsair RM850X, besides meeting the strict ATX version 3.1 transient response requirements, which ask for operation at 200% transient loads for short periods without its rails dropping lower than the specified limits also achieves a high overall performance rating thanks to its tight load regulation, good ripple suppression, the extended hold-up time, the highly efficient 5SB rail, the dead low vampire power and the high power factor read. Moreover, its build quality is high and the fan that Corsair used is also of high quality so that it won't bother you in the long run. The fan speed adjustment knob will come in handy if you want to set the lowest fan speed manually this means that the new RMX units are compatible in any chassis you decide to install them since they can be installed with a fan grill faced downwards or on the side, something that would be a problem for units that have semi-passive fan operation which cannot be adjusted or switched off. Let me further explain that. Say you have a semi-passive PSU where this feature cannot be switched off and you want to install it in a chassis with its fan facing downwards. When the PSU's fan is not operating, the hot air will be trapped inside the PSU so that the semi-passive operation won't last long. And on top of that, it will frequently start the fan. FDB fans take the most stress during the startup phase where the lubricant has to go up to the shaft to minimize the friction. This is why I don't suggest semi-passive PSU's where this feature cannot be deactivated in chassis where the PSU has to be installed with its fan facing downwards or on the side or in a chassis where the PSU compartment doesn't have airflow vents at its top side. Back to the RM850X, the 12V overcurrent protection and overpowered protections are conservatively set below 130% 
but the triggering points at high temperatures should be notably lower than those at lower temperatures. The overcurrent uh, protection triggering points on the minor rails, mostly at 3.3 volt, need some ad adjustments too. Lastly, it is nice to see the fan failure protection implemented. Most of today's high-end PSUs lack this feature, which is of immense importance. If the fan stops operating, the stress applied to the PSU will be high and only if over thermal protection is present and works well, will you avoid drama. This is why I decided to add a bonus for fan failure protection to my performance algorithm. Hopefully, the street prices of the new RMX units will be lower than the MSRP ones because the RMX line has gained so much popularity due to its high performance per price ratio. At $150, the RM850X is more expensive than the competition. Nonetheless, it uses a unique platform developed by Corsair and CWT's engineers and uh, in the worst case, you will pay $30 to $50 more dollars to get a PC part which you will keep in your PC for many years to come. I'm not trying to sugarcoat the $150 official price tag. However, I'm tired of hearing that PSUs are expensive when so much work and time is required for their development, with some brands like Corsair taking the extra step and developing their own platforms. At the same time, other PC parts like graphics cards have skyrocketed prices and still people buy them. We should mainly complain about the increased GPU, CPU and mainboard prices since these parts are way more expensive than PSUs and we typically change them much sooner. Remember, a good PSU is an investment. Before investing in a new part supply, read my best ATX version 3.x PSUs article on hwbusters.com to check all alternative PSU offerings. You will also find this products review on the same site. That's all guys, bye bye.